It's David Wowie. How you doing? Star Dream Encounter. For those of you who don't know what a Star Dream Encounter is in another Eden, it lets you pick the exact character you want in the game. But it is a paid bounty. So you have to pay a bit of money for it. But in exchange for that money, you get who you want. Now, if you were thinking about buying this banner, who should you pick? Who would be best for you? I'll share my own personal recommendations for every element type, and I'll finish it by giving my top two. My favorite support and my favorite damage dealer. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more good stuff like this. And if you're feeling generous and want a bunch of perks, like some exclusive vids, a nice private chat room in our public Discord, and most importantly, your own custom eggplant emoji, become a super member. Also, if you have any questions about the game, our Discord has grown like crazy. Check it out. There's a Q&A section and there's there are wonderful people who are happy to help. Anyway, Star Dream Encounter, who should you pick? One warning I have about the Star Dream Encounter and one main reason why I'm still hesitant if I should even pay money for the Star Dream Encounter is the fact that when you pick who you want, that character won't be Stellar Awakened. If you're a new player and you don't know what Stellar Awakened means, it essentially means unlocking them so that they can potentially reach level 100 plus unlock the skill that makes that character most unique. Most new characters, all new characters are Stellar Awakened. And if you get that character from this Star Dream Encounter, they're not Stellar Awakened. And to Stellar Awaken a character, depending how many banners you pull, if you're in a subscription and so on and so forth, it could take you from one to three months or even more months than that just to Stellar Awaken them and to unlock the skills you want. On top of Stellar Awakening them, you probably need to pull them even more or get more Luring Shadow or Guiding Light points so you can unlock even more Stellar Awakening skills. I have all Guide and Stellar Awakening. So you can check that out if you don't know what that means. But that is, let that be a warning to you. So when you get that character, let's say you pull the, the featured character, Xinhua, Xianhua. She won't have a best skill yet. You need to Stellar Awaken her. So check out my Stellar Awakening guide for that to make sense to you. That is my warning and that will also affect who I recommend for this pool. Because I'm going to lean more towards characters you can get instantly and they'll instantly be good. You don't have to worry about them lacking skills and having to still awaken them. So the first water character I'd recommend getting is a support character and that is Dunarith Alter. So what makes him special are a few things. Firstly, he's a water zone setter. So he awakens sacred water stance, which is great for water based teams. Not only that, if there are four water units in your team, he, he activates and awakens Sacred Water Stance. So if you don't know the difference, basically activating Water Stance makes everyone a little bit stronger. And then when you awaken Water Stance, you get a whole bunch of extra debuffs. Sorry, not buff, debuffs, buffs, which you can see here. Not only that... What Dunith Alter does is he inflicts rage on enemies, so he encourages enemies to attack him because if he gets attacked, he will do this pretty impressive counterattack that is dependent on your intelligence. So the, the more intelligence your Dunith has, the stronger his counterattacks can be. And it, it can be pretty useful, especially if you have a if you're trying to get a boss or an enemy to to focus the attacks on one character instead, let Dunrith Alter take it. At the same time, he'll do a pretty impressive counterattack. He's especially useful also because of this passive here, Ammonia. When in another zone, all party members' attacks gain an additional 0.5% per move. So he's really great for a water slash team. And he came out at around the same time as a bunch of pretty impressive Water Slash characters came out, such as El Seal, Ilulu Alter, and Filmina Extra Style, who is my next water-based recommended unit. So Filmina Extra Style, I actually wish I had her. I don't have her yet, but I know a lot of people have said great things about her. And she, if you have the Water Slash team set, she will complete it for you. So there's the characters I mentioned just then. So there's Duna, Dunareth Alter, there's El Seal, there's Ilul Alter, and there's Filmina ES. Those four work perfectly together. I think they were designed to be together, essentially. And if you have that, that's pretty much like a water damage dealing dream team. 
and I've used a bunch of them except for Filmina ES on a boss you can see in one of my previous videos where I fought, fought I think the, the Dawn Tower Master using a Water Slash team so they're super effective so Filmina ES is good for, for a number of reasons firstly she is a pretty high damage dealing Water Slash character and even her basic attack can be great for clearing dungeons so if you see here Shadow Glass what it can do is it replaces your basic attack to deal a water slash attack on all enemies that cost zero MP. So it's, it's great for uh, dungeon dungeon runs. So essentially she is a pretty decent water based damage dealer. Most of her skill set is just designed about on increasing her damage. The only thing with these two characters is that, is that they may because it's been a while since we've gotten new water damage dealing characters with the exception of UL and Ella style they may become power crept in a future update that's coming soon who knows though next let's look at my top wind characters so i would personally pull as a wind character sesta sesta even today is amazing she i've done a whole guide on her so you can check that out but she's a fantastically strong wind slash character, though there's a catch with her. She's only fantastically strong if you get her to use her twin blade wolf skill. And to use that twin blade wolf skill, you need three other wind characters in your party. If you're end game, that should be relatively easy. But if you're brand new, it may take some time to collect more wind characters. But there are free wind characters out there and it may be fun collecting them. But for her to use it, you can't mix and match other characters. She needs to be with a strictly win team for, for her to use her, her full skill set. She can still be, be pretty decent with non-win characters, but if you wanted to perform her best, you got to have win team, man. But she is so destructive with Twin Blade Wolf. So what Twin Blade Wolf does it perform, is it performs a number of her top skills at once. And it just does crazy damage. You'll see for yourself if you have and other people can testify to that. That is what makes it special. And the second win character I would recommend is Melody Another Style. So what makes Melody Another Style exceptional are a number of things. Firstly, she's a pain and poison setter. For those who've seen my team building vid, I always recommend having some kind of character or sidekick or element in the team that inflicts pain or poison. She is one of those people. Not only that, she greatly debuffs your enemy and makes him super weak against wind. So she's perfect for a pure wind team, like if you have Sesta and other wind characters in your team. If you have all wind characters, her debuffs double in effect. So for example, Dark Drill, if you have four wind characters in the front line, your enemies, you reduce their wind resistance by 100%. Not only that, Melody and Ella Style can set a barrier on your team with a 50% damage reduction, which is awesome. She is cool. I like her. She is a great character to have in your win team arsenal. I recommend two win characters, but here's a bonus one for you. And I've talked about her in many other videos before, and I have even have a guide for her, and that is Yifa and Ella Style. So where what Melody and Ella Style excels at is purely supporting a win team and making the enemy weak against win and setting point painting and poison what Yif another style is good at is greatly enhancing the attack of whatever character whatever element they are she does other things too like she can set a barrier she can heal but i primarily use her for greatly increasing the stats of a specific character check out the guide on how to do it but she can change a, a normal million hundred million ish damage dealer and convert them into a billion damage dealer thanks to her buff skills. So Yifa No Style is still good, still relevant today, even if she's slightly older. Another win character I forgot to add in there, Melpifia. She's best if you can Stellar Awaken her, especially for one of her Stellar Awaken skills. If you enhance that Stellar Awaken skill, attacks cost zero MP in the first turn, which is fantastic if you're clearing mobs. If you put Melpifia in your team and she's Stellar Awakened, none of these attacks will cost any MP, which has been super useful for me. And her future side trend, Quality skill is is really good because it makes her a very important healer in your team. She heals everyone's HP and MP every single turn and removes all debuffs from all party members. 
really good healer and depending on the structure of the battle Nopifia can make your team stronger in attack or stronger in defense I've done a whole guide on, on how to use it properly and if also if you love the Rise Saga and want the whole Arcadia team then you need Mopifia to complete the set while on that she's also a win king stance zone setter and if she has an all Arcadia team with her she can turn the elemental type to wind the next character I would recommend is a fire flame character and that is Minalka Minalka came with the first part of the main story part 3 release and she is exceptional for a few reasons firstly she is a really strong very impressive fire slash damage dealing character she has she can attack multiple enemies at once she can attack mobs or she can she's re really good against single enemies what makes it really good is my favorite skill of hers rip and tear which has barrier piece a lot of super bosses you'll find have barrier piece in them rip and tear tears straight through it some people may get Minaka purely for a sidekick tetra what stands out with tetra is he heals your team at the end of every turn he removes their statuses he restores their statuses so if they're poisoned if they're asleep if they're confused he'll restore those statuses and after a certain number of charges eight charges as we see here he can he will reincarnate every member who's been knocked out so this has saved my tushy several times in many occasions so even if you'll find Minaka power crept at some point getting her purely for a sidekick tetra could be a wise decision so the next flame element character i would recommend is none other than the newest one of the newest characters that just came out annabelle extra style and she is insane i wish i have it i don't have it just yet she may be the one I pick for my side rim encounter, but keep watching because I'll make a top recommendation for everyone. Not only is can she heal everyone, she's a pain and poison setter. She can give everyone a barrier. She can attack everyone with some decent attack skills. She can remove all the buffs from enemies plus some. So she, she's an all-in-one kind of character and she has some unique traits. So for example, this guiding light mode, when the three more light characters in the front line, her power increases and, and her attacks become stronger. If there are three or more shadow characters in the front line, her HP increases and she activates cover. So she gets, so she, she bears the brunt of the attacks, essentially making her more of a tank than normal. So she can, depending on if you have more light characters she can be used still as a decent tank but also as an attack unit or if she has more shade characters for example a lot of lower defense characters in her team like magic users like the, the latest Xianhua she can be everyone's tank so her HP increases and she becomes a stronger tank but either way her skill set is fantastically impressive she is a great tank a decent attacker a healer, a paint and poison setter. Not only that, she has she can activate two kinds of stances, which is a defense wall, which reduces damage by 50% for all types of attack moves, and she can set raging fire stance. As a support character, fire element, I would definitely go Annabelle Extra Style. I know I'm not I don't want to focus too much on Stellar Awakened characters, but I just had to because I don't think there's a better character that isn't as isn't power crept yet as Kuchinawa. So I've done a whole guide on Kuchinawa, which talks about why he's so fantastic. But just in summary, he is a fantastic damage dealing magic user. He's part of the latest Wormrest saga. So if you're into lore, if you just love the re the recent Wormrest saga featuring Rise and you want to complete the whole Arcadia member set, then you need Kuchinawa in your team. What makes him pretty good, firstly, he's, is the fact that he's a pain and poison setter. He does an insanely impressive debuff move. So his Stellar Awakened skill, River of Snakes, greatly reduces your enemy's power, intelligence, speed, and endurance. He has some buffs for magic users. He has a decent earth magic attack, and he can set Torn Earth stance. 
He does have some confusing attributes about him, which I've explained in my video, but overall, I love him as a nerf character. Another substitute that I like and that for some that I think should be higher on the tier list is Sarius. He's a fantastic damage dealer. I've done a whole guide on him too. And like Kuchinawa, they're probably not as good if you don't stellar awaken them. So just be aware if you choose Sarius or Kuchinawa, they're better, they're much better if you Stellar Awaken them. Like, like all new Stellar Awaken characters, they're just much, you need to Stellar Awaken them. So I've done a full guide on Ceres, but he is an incredible damage dealer if you set him up right. If you look at all my latest damage test videos, all of the damage they deal, the incredible billion damage they can inflict on enemies is primarily due to Mune for Alter. Mune for Alter works across all elements, even if she's primarily an Earth cat unit and she can set Torn Earth Stance and Awaken any zone. She can work with any elemental unit. So you use her buff skills to make your main damage dealer exceptionally strong. And you have to put the main damage dealer to her right. If, you, if you're looking at them on the screen, put your damage dealer on their right. Because one of her skills here, please, increases the damage by 50% and weakness plot and increases their weakness multiplier. Plus does a bunch of all this other stuff. So she is a fantastic support character. And she also gives some buffs to the character on her left. So if you have a healer on your left, for example, or a magic user who needs more defense, she gives him a barrier. But overall, Immune for Alter is a great Earth support character. Highly recommend her. Next, let's look at Crystal. The first character I would recommend is Thililila Extra Style. And once again, unfortunately, she is a Stellar Awakened character and she's best if you Stellar Awaken her. I've done a whole guide on why she's good. Some key points about her. One is that she is a Crystalline Stance Setter. So she is great if you have an All Crystal team and you want them to increase damage in Crystalline Stance. She can also awaken Crystalline Stance to make everyone even much stronger. She has a bunch of fantastic damage dealing abilities, plus she is a pain setter. Her stellar skill has barrier piece. And another important part about her is her sidekick Moki. He's designed mainly to support Thilili ES, plus he's also designed to be cute. So for Thilili fans out there, for Moki fans out there, for anyone who loved the Western Mythos Saga, then Thilili ES is your go-to character. Her, her side quest is actually quite fun and her story wraps up quite well. And this, the, you also get a bonus Moki side quest with her. I, think, I don't think you even need these characters to play it. You'll see some prompts if you go to the Western continent. The next char crystal character I'd like to re recommend is another Stellar Awakened character. And she's a hybrid attack and sort of support character. And that is Alma Anola style. Watch my video on her too. Essentially, you can set her up to be almost immortal. First thing is good about her is what her normal cell has, which is brain record. What brain record does is it changes the el her element to what your element is weak against. So if they're weak against fire, even if she's crystal, using brain record will make that enemy weak against all my normal style attacks. That's the first thing. The next thing is she, like the Lily ES, she's also a Crystalline Stance Setter. And if you have an all Crystal team in the front line, she can awaken Crystalline Stance. So right from the get-go, if your strategy is to use another force from the start with a Crystal team, they'll be dealing insane damage. It, because if you have an all Crystal team at the start, she'll set awaken Crystalline Stance and everyone will just get massively buffed. And what's impressive about her is her refraction bullet skill set. So what happens with this is that whenever she receives an attack, she'll counter it, something strong depending on her power level. Not only that, she'll restore your team's HP and MP. Not only that, she can counter, someone can correct me if I'm wrong here, as many times as she's been attacked. So if you're fighting an annoying boss like the inimical travel boss from Octopath who does multiple hits she will count it with the same number of hits and there's a video i react to on her guide that i've done check it out where she essentially beats the ukwaji clan without getting hurt she's an exceptional character and i highly recommend her and you know what my alma nova style isn't stellar awakened and she's still quite impressive so i haven't been able to use her stellar awakened skill and still use her for some big battles
But if he's still awake in her, even better. So she can get barrier pierce and a bunch of other good stuff. Now let's look at Thunder teams. Thunder characters are probably the least user friendly characters because from first glance, their attacks won't be as impressive looking as a fire character, for example. If you use Minoko in, a, in an enemy, people will raise their eyebrows and go, oh, that's impressive. If you use a Thunder character, you need to play around with them a bit more for them to start looking impressive. With Thunder teams, they're best with high speed, another force, multi-hit damage attacks. And if you want a high force, if you want a high speed, multi-attack character, then Valette is your person. Plus she is in Main Story Part 3 and she plays a significant role. So if you're a completionist and you love the story, then you probably want Valette too. Plus she's an Aussie, you know? Gotta vote for Aussies. And she's a thundering stand setter. And another reason you may want to get her is for her sidekick, Guns. Guns has his own pretty or her own pretty pretty decent story. Guns is tailored for Thunder Team. So if you have a Thunder team and want a, a, a Thunder based sidekick that is designed to improve everyone's thunder attacks, then Guns is a great sidekick to have. Another so a, a decent thunder support character would be an Olea Anola style. Firstly, you may want to get a, if you're an Olea fan. If you're a Thunder Thighs fan, then Olea is your character. She's part of the Wandering in the Vortex series, and she, she plays a crucial role in it. So her another style version may be a fantastic welcome for the Olea and Wandering in the Vortex fans. And if you want all the Wandering in the Vortex characters, then you may want to get Olea another style. So purely for fans, she may be good for you. And she has a number of good support skills. So she can shield, and she has a number of support skills that may that are impressive but may also confuse some people because a shield and barrier she essentially just gives them to herself but then that's because she inflicts rage on your enemy so the enemy just focuses on Ole and other style and Ole and other style will absorb the hits depending on how you set her up she also has a number of debuff skills that reduces power intelligence and speed making your thunder team faster and stronger against them not only that she can set thundering stance and awaken it so she's great, thundering stance, zone setter, and awaken-ish kind of person. And at the battle, at the start of the battle, she can set whole ground, preventing you from dying. So as a thunder support character, I would recommend Olay and Alistar. And I think she's the only thunder support character at the moment. I wasn't going to recommend a non-elemental character, but thanks to the one of the newest gacha characters in the game, Xianhua, I'm gonna do it. So Xianhua, as you may already know, is one of the newest characters and she can be absolutely broken. So she's a non-element magic user. And she's interesting for a number of reasons. First, she can deploy magic fate stance. And unlike a lot of the characters in the game where I just focus on about three skills, most of Xianhua's skills are actually very useful for very different scenarios. And I wish I had more luring shadow points that I can equip her with more skills. Two, two interesting skills of hers are hacking and breakdown. For those veteran players in the game who know the character Mana, these two skills may remind you of her. So hacking reduces the intelligence and physical resistance, but at the same time increases the power and magic resistance of all both enemies and party members. Use hacking, for example, as a skill to improve a mainly physical damage dealing team and you'll use Xianhua more as a support character for this because it will reduce her intelligence and she needs intelligence to perform to attack well. So this is more if you want to buff up physical attack characters in your team and use Xianhua more as a support. Then, then on the flip side of that we have Breakdown which reduces the power and magic resistance of all allies and enemies but at the same time increases intelligence and physical resistance of all allies and enemies so this is great if you want to buff up a magic team and if you're fighting an enemy that mainly relies on physical attacks with those aside she has a few awesome skills so for example link as i mentioned before can deploy magic fate stance she can awaken magic fate stance as well making everyone super deadly i like the skill trinity because not only does it buff Xianhua, it gives a barrier to all party members with 50 percent redu reduction and he can awaken another zone so this is another great support skill she has a number of deadly damage dealing skills so horizon was a magic attack on all enemies and it, it ignores their defense 
super powerful magic attack, especially her, her rather good damage dealing attack is Tesseract, which does an insane magic type attack on all enemies, double XL size, times 5. Plus it inflicts Expose on all enemies, making them weak to non-type attacks. She is a super broken non-elemental magic user, highly recommend her. Check out my guide that will be coming soon. And finally, which shade support characters would I recommend? The first is Yakumo. Yakumo, I recently used him to defeat one of the toughest bosses I've fought, which is the Inimico Travel Boss. I don't know the full name of it, but he's the Octopath Travel final boss that you fight again after finishing the episode. Yakumo is a crazy hardcore shade magic damage dealer whose deletion attack can inflict insane amounts of damage. That pretty much just sums him up. So he's a, he sucks up a lot of MP, but he also regenerates a lot of MP and he uses that MP to deal an incredible amount of damage. Another reason you may want to get Yakumo if you feel that he's getting power crept is purely for his sidekick Kumos. So Kumos is sort of like the MP version of the of Minaka's sidekick Tetra. So Kumos makes enemies weaker against shade attacks, but most importantly, he regenerates everyone's MP at the end of every turn. He's also great with Yakumo and replenishes his MP so he can deal as much damage as possible. So he, so if you wanted a shade, high damage dealing shade character, I would still vote for Yakumo. And even as he he starts to get power crept, you'd want him for a sidekick Yakumo. Also, you may want him because his another style version is coming out soon. So you can upgrade Yakumo and get Yakumo another style if you're lucky. Also, Yakumo is one of the rare characters who's still amazing and not power crept yet who doesn't need to be Stellar Awakened, which is fantastic. The next Shade character is a Magic Fire slash Shade, but I would say primarily Shade character, Iffy. Iffy, hands down, could be the best character in the game at this point in time, for one main reason, to me anyway, personally. And that main reason is the, f is the fact that she can revive knocked out characters, essentially, if you do it right, for a limited number of times in the battle. Other benefit she has is she's a Pain and Poison setter, She's a debuffer, so she can reduce your enemy's power, intelligence, and speed. Plus, she can increase your team's power, intelligence, or speed. She can also deploy Biting Shade Stance. Her attack skills are okay, but I would mainly use her as a support. And as you watch a lot of YouTube videos who use her, she's mainly support, especially she's that one who revives everyone from being knocked out. So use her. Some, I usually use her combined with the sidekick Tetra to have a team that they can frequently get revived when they get knocked out. Super useful. She is great. Plus her side quest is a unique side quest because she is a global anniversary character. She came a year after Eva. And her side quest is, is bittersweet. And it's an enjoyable play and it's unique. Like Eva's side quest and Melissa's side quest. So highly recommend if you. So who would I recommend in this Star Dream encounter? I would actually personally recommend two support characters, but I know I promised to to include a damage dealer. So for this Star Dream encounter, if you don't have her, I would recommend Minolka. Minolka, because she's a decent fire slash character, I would personally I think she's been power crept by Tsukiha, a stellar awakened Tsukiha. But then you need to still awaken Tsuki and that, that requires a bit of work. Plus get her manifest weapon to make her stronger. So that also requires work. But if you want someone you just get instantly who's decent, Minaka is the way to go. And one major reason I would get her, as I mentioned earlier, is for her sidekick Tetra. Her sidekick is can be crucial to your battle and to surviving a super boss. Firstly because of his healing abilities and also because Tetra can revive knocked out characters after eight charges so i would get minaka firstly because she's a decent character she's a part of the main story decent attacker getting power crap like she's power crap by tukiha but her sidekick can make her investment worthwhile but my top two picks for the star dream encounter would be firstly Mune for alter if you want to deal that multi-billion sweet sweet multi-billion damage you need Mune for alter in your team she is clearly one of the best support characters in this game hands down i'll tell you the skills i use please i'll do my best and charity blend and then when when ready use tampered roast to awaken this dance you can do the research on why later but essentially 
Use her to really buff up your characters, make your damage dealer exceptionally strong. And you can also use her to awaken whatever stance you're in. So if you're in Torn Earth stance, for example, she will awaken that stance for you using Tampered Roast. Whatever sta elemental stance you're in, she can awaken it, but primarily use her to make your damage deal exceptionally strong. I can't highlight how important she is to my teams. The number one recommendation I would have is Iffy. As of now, but maybe because everyone loves her so much, they'll find ways to counter her. But as of now, if you played any bit of content up to now, Iffy can be super useful for most super boss battles. Not all of them, but a lot of them she can be super useful. And just in your team in general, her story is great. And the fact that she can bring knocked out characters from being knocked out, she's fantastic. I would highly recommend Iffy. I would highly recommend Mune for Alter. And I would highly recommend Minalka for especially for her sidekick Tetra. And if you wanted a number four, Yakumo, because he's a great shade damage dealer and he's got his sidekick Kumos. So I hope you enjoyed my recommendations. If you have your own personal recommendations or thoughts, share them in the comments. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to support this channel and get some perks while doing it, become a super member. Also, check out our Discord.